So now let's get into some specifics about points. Large intestine one, Shang Yang, metal yang. This is the Jing Well point. It is the metal point on the metal channel, and that makes it what we call the Harari point. Yes. Harari points are the point that is the same element as the channel it's on. So on the large intestine channel, it is large intestine one, which is the metal point on the metal channel. On the spleen channel, spleen three, which is the earth point on the earth channel. Uh, lung eight is the Harari point on the lung channel, metal point on the metal channel. So this point that is the same element or part of the same elemental phase as the channel it lies on is called the Harari point. Large intestine one, Shang Yang, is on the radial side of the index finger, one tenth of a soon from the corner of the nail. Its function, its fun resolves the exterior and abates heat. So there we start to see some of the heat clearing that's associated with Yang Ming. Clear the lung and disinhibit the throat, right? Because of its relationship, internally external relationship with the lung, the channel connects with the lung and obviously passes through the throat. Courses and discharges Yang Ming pathogenic heat. So pathogenic heat in Yang Ming results in thirst, sweating, fever, headache. This will help uh, discharge that corset, get it to move out. And it opens the portals and revives the spirit. You will find that uh, that is a common function of the Jing Well points. Remember, we call them 911 points, right? They, they open the portals, they revive consciousness. Indications for large intestine one, Shang Yang, toothache, sore throat, swelling of the submandibular region. That should be U L A R, I apologize for the typo there, submandibular region, the area under the mandible. Numbness of the fingers, febrile disease without sweating, and hydrosis. And loss of consciousness. Large intestine four, Hegdu. This is the Yuan source point, the entry point, and one of the four command points, the four command point of the face and mouth. This is a huge point. You will use it often. It's used in acupressure, acupuncture. It is one, it is one of the biggies. So if you have printed out this PowerPoint, you can put stars on this. If you're taking notes, put stars around the point in your note. This is a, this is a big, big point. Um, it's on the dorsum of the hand, in the web, between the first and second metacarpal bones, approximately in the middle of the second metacarpal bone on the radial side. So let's just advance to a slide that has a picture here. There we go. Yes. Okay, so here, right? Here's the first metacarpal and the second. The point is here in the web between approximately in the level of the middle of the first metacarpal. Second metacarpal, I apologize. Okay. It frees the channels and quickens the connecting vessels. It courses wind and resolves the exterior, clears heat and discharges lung heat. Again, we see a heat function. Frees gastrointestinal downbearing. Right? I was saying this is a big point. This is one of the few points that's going to have an effect on the intestines themselves. Relieves gas pain and quiets the spirit. Quiets the spirit. Okay. Because it is such a quickens the connecting vessels, frees the channel, down bearing, right? all of these things, it's a big, big point for moving chi, down bearing chi. It is contraindicated in pregnancy because of those reasons. 
but it's great, contraindicated in pregnancy, but indicated for headache, neck or body pain, redness, swelling, pain of the eye, epistaxis, which is nosebleed, nasal obstruction. People are amazed when their nose is, is blocked and you rub this point on their hand and their nose starts to clear. <laughs> they are quite amazed and it does work that way. Toothache, deafness, so pretty much all the things, facial swelling, sore throat, all the things that the channel can do, this one point can do. That's why it's such a big point, right? It really takes on all of the attributes of the channel. Headache, neck or body pain, redness, swelling, pain of the eye, nosebleed, that's heat generally, not always, but generally. Nasal obstruction, toothache, deafness, facial swelling, sore throat also can be related to heat. So, so big, 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 big point. This point is also because of its strong chi moving quality is paired often with liver three, which can anchor the yang, bring chi down into the lower body um, and circulate the chi. And when they're used together, they're, the, they're called the four gates. Now liver three, you're not going to learn until near the end of the semester, but you should know uh, the four gates are large intestine four and liver three, and they're used uh, together to uh, harmonize and circulate the chi. Also, because of where the channel runs, right, we see um, here neck or body pain, right? Because of where the channel runs, difficulty turning the neck the rotation of the neck can be related to uh, to hand young name to the large intestine channel. Large intestine five, young chi, young stream. This is the Jing River point, fire point. It's on the radial side of the wrist. When the thumb is tilted upwards, like you're giving someone the thumbs up sign, it's in a depression between the tendons of the muscles, extensor pollicis longus and brevis, right? So, extensor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis brevis, right? This is also known as the anatomical snuff box. Right? So the channel comes down this way yeah, runs very close because remember lung seven broken sequence, the acute comes off to the, to the stylus process of the radius, right? I guess that's a, there's a reason that that's the connecting point, right? Because look, it's mean, so close to the, to the channel here, right? They pass very close together. And then it moves up the lateral aspect of the arm. On a line from here to the lateral side of the uh, cubital crease, Right, so if you bend your elbow and you see the crease that comes down, right, right at the end of that crease is large intestine 11. And the points of the forearm are located on a line between large intestine five and large intestine 11, which is at the lateral side of the transverse cubital crease. Okay, but large intestine five is on the radial side of the wrist when the thumb is tilted upwards, it is in the depression between the tendons of the muscles, extensor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis. Spells wind, drains fire, dissipates yang ming pathogenic heat. Red eyes, red face, sweating, fever, headache. Indicated, there you go. Headache, redness and pain, and swelling of the eye, toothache, sore throat, and wrist pain. Of course, there's local function as well, local effect. Large intestine 10, Shu Sun Li. Arm, three mile. On the line, joining large intestine 5 and large intestine 11, two Sun below the cubital crease. 
Right? Remember the cubital crease is the crease formed when the elbow bend. Right? It's the crease in the middle of the elbow area on the anterior part of the arm. So on the line joining large intestine 5 and large intestine 11, two send below the cubital crease. So where this arrow is, the cubital crease is under here, large intestine 11, large intestine 5, right? And we can see the channel runs here, and then there's a line that runs slightly, we're on the lateral part of the, the arm, it runs slightly posterior, slightly, okay? So, the point is right here. Two sun below on a line connecting large intestine 11 and large intestine 5. Okay. Dispels wind and frees the connecting vessels, harmonizes the stomach, and disinhibits the intestines. Okay, so here we see some digestive function. Large intestine 10 is energetically related to stomach 36, which is Jusanli, which is leg three mile. And the whole point is that they nourish chi so much that if you're hiking, if you're on a march and you're tired, if you massage these points, you will end up with enough energy to walk another three miles. Right, so freeing the connecting vessels, harmonizing the stomach, disinhibiting the intestines. So abdominal pain, diarrhea, toothache, swelling of the cheek, motor impairment of the upper limb. So now we're start, gonna start to see some shoulder issues being picked up as we move closer to the shoulder, right? And pain in the shoulder and back. Think back to where that sinew channel runs, right? Covering the neck, the shoulder connecting to the upper thoracics. That picture once again. Okay. 